Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is a special Q&A, Why We Are at War with Mainstream Science. I'm going to read you an email that is between an astrophysics professor out of Canada and a regular old flat earther. So let's get right to it, shall we? The, and I'll, I'll refer to the professor as teacher and the other guy as me, because that's how it's written here. So, teacher. LOL, you're an idiot. Pseudoscientific theories of inferior intellects. Reality must be confusing for you. Blocked. Me. Well, thanks for your reply. Idiot me? Possibly. Research it and talk to me next year. I'm really looking for some people that have seen the light of day. Why reply if it's that stupid? Teacher. Fighting inbred people's false logic is my sworn duty. Internet is not research. I have a master's degree in astrophysics. Again, internet is not legitimate and valid research. Weak minds always tend to fall for that crap. It allows them to feel up to par to those who are actually intelligent. Me. Well... Just because you were taught astrophysics does not mean it's fail-proof. Sorry you paid large dollars for your education. I quit in grade 10. True fact, to laugh at someone's thinking is not the way to go about it. I looked at both sides of the coin and tried to debunk the stupid flat earth, but ended up on the flat side. Didn't wake up one morning and said to myself, I want to be a flat earther. Not going to bash you for anything ever. Please don't use your degree to put me lower than yourself, as I'm doing extremely well in life. And that is job, top 0.5% earner bracket in Canada, plus have a great family and some friends who really know me, and I don't expect them to believe in what I believe. But if you really have a degree in astrophysics, I would love to converse in person with you without the judging part. Teacher. I wrote a thesis on alternate methods to stabilize the orbits of satellites. Satellites would be unable to remain in the sky if the Earth was flat. The moon would not stay afloat either. Like I said, you believe that crap because it makes you feel better about who you are, about dropping out of school. It makes you feel like you belong with or are above smart people. Me. So you wrote about the alternate methods to stabilize satellites in orbit. So I can write a thesis about how to make a car fly and that same car go underwater means you can come up with assumed ideas on how satellites really work because you never actually been beside one in space, have you? You probably still believe they actually went to the moon. Honest question. Teacher. It's called intersubjectivity empirical observation and deduction. We see the moon and the stars move around the sky. Also, every alternate theory that flat earthers praise make many more assumptions than the accepted round earth explanation. My theory only has one weakness. We still can't fully explain gravitation. Flat earthers cannot adequately explain how the Earth keeps accelerating upwards to create the illusion of gravity. They cannot explain the phenomena of the horizon or how the aurora borealis can exist. All theories rely on at least one accepted given. Flat earthers rely on much more than a single given premise. Me. Excellent. Flat Earth society is not the real Flat Earth movement. Controlled opposition to make the whole, seem, see, whole thing seem silly. Our model does not move up at 1g force speed to compensate for gravity. Gravity or the force that requires heavier objects than the surrounding air molecules just fall down. The ones lighter just rise up. It's called density. As for the horizon, it's always rising to your eye level. That can only happen on a flatter surface. Any sphere, no matter the size, as you rise up, it will start falling away from your eye level. What really got me is the research I have done for at least 20 years on the moon landing. Never believed it, and now it's more obvious than ever. Here is my take on the whole conspiracy thing. Admiral Byrd was America's greatest explorer. 
Then he came back from his last expedition in 1957, I believe. They launched Operation Fishbowl, which was firing nukes straight up as high as they could for a few years. And then they went up there and didn't like what they saw. Created NASA in 58, signed a treaty so no, no one can claim Antarctica ever, actually to be renewed in 2043. If there is a small percentage, small odds that they realized it was flat, would they tell? It would be chaos all over the world. Just imagine the church finds an old manuscript saying that the Virgin Mary was actually Josephine. Oh, I see what you did there. Would they tell of just keep or just keep going with what, with what they have? The deepest hole man ever drilled was eight miles. So how would they know what's inside the spinning thousand mile an hour ball circulating the sun tilted at 23.4 degrees at 66,000 miles an hour and going through the galaxy at over 500,000 a mile miles an hour in the infinite space through the great retractor those are the numbers needed to make the math work in my opinion thanks for your last email by the way forgot that all that spinning in astronomical speeds but yet polaris stays above our north pole and the answer is always because it's 345 light years away yet we still see it we must have bionic eyes teacher commendable attempt very sophisticated by the way, overtly complicated logics and arguments are known as sophisms. The general wisdom is that simpler explanations are often preferable to sophisticated ones. See Occam's Razor for more on this. Also, your entire argument contains one glaring fatal flaw. Particle density in itself does not explain why some things rise and others sink. Think about it. Why would the heavier ones go down before the lighter ones? What drags them downwards with more force than the lighter ones? Why don't they go upwards instead, if not for the existence of a matrix that dictates how and where denser particles move as compared to the lighter ones? There is no limit to the distance that light can travel. It may fade, but it does not disappear unless it encounters some sort of obstruction. Your light argument is moot. Unfounded and unsustainable me to try to answer to particles air has mass the higher you go the mass you have and that is also dependent on hot or cold air take helium balloons which by the way launch satellites by the hundreds yearly once they reach a certain altitude they stop rising around 115,000 feet but when it is nighttime they descend some 30,000 feet and rise again when the temperature gets hotter NASA is the single largest cons consumer of helium in the world, bar none. Let's say this flat earth is made by design. Not like a globe where nothing became everything and evolution has us believing that we came from seashells, then monkeys, so that theory means today's monkeys are the humans of tomorrow. So if in fact this is by design, what better way to keep us inside? We go south and encounter super cold weather and eventually dark and nothingness. You try to go up and you run out of air to breathe. All natural conditions to keep us from leaving. Science has great discovery, but a lot of it is only theory or pseudoscience. Science is experiments. Prove them and repeat which is not the case in a lot of aspects. Newton came up with gravity and got accepted by all science programs since then. One man decided that a falling apple is gravity. We are way too far into the deception. And once a little lie becomes bigger, then at one point you can't turn back. NASA has 52 million reasons per day to keep the lie going with an annual budget of $19 billion. After all, it's much easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. Teacher. You still fail to explain why up is up and down is down. Again, mass, by its very definition, is the measure of the effect of gravity. Me. I did explain it. An object denser than the air surrounding will fall. Gravity needs to exist to have a spinning sphere and keep trillions of pounds of water and buildings stuck to the earth. They say the moon's gravity is strong enough to pull our oceans and create our tides, but it isn't gravity too large masses attracting each other while the bigger mass getting the better of the two masses. So why not pull the moon right in? And that gravity fails to explain or work if a third mass is there, then explain how our atmosphere is against a vacuum of space and we don't get sucked into space. So gravity is very complex and can't be replicated at all. Therefore, a theory. Teacher. Uh, 
This is like my undergrad classes all over again. The moon doesn't fall to the earth because it is trying to move in a straight line, but the earth pulls it, which deviates its trajectory. Actually, the moon is always falling. It's just that it also gives forward quickly, sorry, goes forward quickly enough that it is always falling in a vector that isn't perpendicular to the Earth's center of gravity. Thus, it is in a state of constant fall. More precisely, it is exactly receding from the Earth ever so slightly, such that it would one day slingshot out of its orbit, but the Sun will have died before then. Also, multivectoral models of gravity do exist relativistic physics, i.e. developed by Einstein, managed to successfully explain the orbits of planets that appeared irregular. It also managed to explain the orbit of Mercury without requiring the existence of another hidden planet. Me. Sorry, I certainly wouldn't want to be a student, haha. I do understand the motions and always following theory. It is the theory because no one can actually 100% be sure. Wouldn't it be a lot simpler if the moon and the sun were a lot closer and circulating around the electromagnetic North Pole? That way you wouldn't need all the coincidences I will present to you. One, the sun 98 million miles away, actually it should be 93, uh, which happens to be 400 times further than the moon, but coincidentally is also 400 times bigger, which is why they look about the same size. Two, the moon's rotation cycle is exactly precise with our rotation of Earth, hence why we only see the same side forever. Three, seasons are opposites, meaning when the Earth circles around the sun, the North Pole has the sun being closest in the winter because of the Earth's tilt, and the same for the South Pole has its summer when the sun is farther. Four, you can actually do this experiment yourself. I did take a temperature measuring device. I use one to measure uh, race tire temperature and point it during the day at the ground in the sunlight and then in the shade. We all have obvious different readings and then do it at night in the moonlight and in the shade. Funny thing will happen is that the moonlight is cooler by three to four degrees than the shade. Opposite of the experiment from the sun. Weird, isn't it? Self-illuminating to cool down the earth and sun to warm it up. Simple concept. Teacher, you googling this stuff up does not make you an adept any more than me googling carpentry would make me an expert carpenter. It is ultimately a waste of everyone's time when wannabes try to play in the big leagues. It's not about what you do understand as much as all the logical fallacies that you weave into your reasoning. There's a reason why you're not an expert in the matter and why you're just a groupie or member of a conspiracy fan club. I mean, seriously, dude, you're more of a drone to conspiracy than I apparently am to established wisdom. Me. Well, all of our info comes from sources. Web, friends, personal experiences, school, people, television, and personal observation. You are no different. You just decided to follow a specific field, and I chose to listen. Look, read, and make my own deduction. I don't take everything as facts. I use what made me very successful in my hobbies and my job and family, which is common sense. Not saying it's right or wrong, but it's the way I'm built. There is not one thing you came up with that was without relying on some kind of research that others came up with from others. See the chain here? Most people are too indoctrinated to even consider looking at something they don't believe in, and especially Flat Earth. Biggest mistake people make is not questioning everything man-made. People that have money and power will do anything to keep it, and that includes brainwashing from a very young age. But was nice seeing your point of view. Teacher. Nice attempt at gaining some kind of virtual moral high ground with your response, but you fail at it. You're trying to preach your gospel, just the same as those you denounce. You find tidbits of info from the one of the least reputable and trustworthy platforms that exist, which also constitutes a fail. Then you proceed to connect the dots that you fragmented info in such a way as to push your own agenda, which is also a fail. Lastly, no one pays you a single dollar for your so-called wisdom, which also constitutes a fail since societies usually invest their money in those ideas that promise results and return in investments. Like I said, leave the big brain stuff to the big brains and focus on the big arm stuff. Everyone has a place in this world. I suggest that you know yours and accept it accordingly. Bottom line is that flat earthers have failed to produce anything of any substance on any level. The small will forever doubt the great, but we cannot fault them 
for it is beyond them to grasp greatness. A grasshopper will never be able to understand the world as experienced by a goose. Me. You are real bad at reading people. <laughs> Leave that up to pros like myself that make large dollars being able to do so. Being smart is reading a book and having knowledge of many different topics. No, it's not. That's called information retention. I have met so many people that have had big, long ass degrees, but so enclosed in their thinking that they don't see how the work might operate. Instead, they praise themselves on how better they are cause of knowledge in a specific field. It is real sad to see, especially coming from my perspective. Hey, can't blame you. Born, raised, educate, listen, don't ask too many questions. Stay busy, no time to scrutinize anything, procreate, and then go in peace not knowing about your real place in the world. I think they call that indoctrination. It is working because 95% of the population is like you. Sad, very sad, but good luck. Teacher. Hmm. Preachy, pretentious, condescending, and arrogant. Nope. I pretty much nailed it. Like I said, leave the big brain stuff to the big brains and stick to landscaping or whatever other menial tasks that you do for a living. Me. Arrogant? Did you actually read your own previous posts? You're mad because deep down you are doubting yourself. I understand that part. I would be too. I'm in sales, not landscaping, but I know a few landscapers. Nice, simple guys. Work hard and make a living. As for the big brains, sorry to tell you that no one impresses me. Again, I am totally self-made and don't rely on nobody. We still have a great conversation, had a great conversation until you decided that you didn't like what you heard and touched a sensitive cord. Therefore, using a deflection or self-defense mechanism to counteract, I get it. I'm not sure if you're still teaching. I presume that's what you do to prepare, prepare yourself to be able to answer your new students about the few things I mentioned. Lots of young people are awake. We should really chat over coffee. The tone and respect for each other will change as it's natural to be civilized when face to face. I'm in any time and willing to listen and take in your info with an open mind. Teacher. Nope, I'm right. Leave the big brain stuff to the big brains and stick to landscaping. Me. Okay. If you ever change your mind, let's meet up. Cheers. Teacher, sorry, I don't speak in bread. You should look into chemtrails. Your kind thrive on that crap. Bye, Mr. Preachy, arrogant, condescending landscaper with an inferiority complex. Me, oh well, you're missing out on personal growth. After all, the world needs a few leaders and tons of followers. You want to know how I know you're a follower? I got you conversing all day. The end. And that is one of the reasons we're at war.